Hey, 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 y'all, and welcome back to Making Leader Moves, and we are so excited to have you. I'm very excited to have you with me today, and I know our guest speaker, Alyssa, as well, is super pumped. Um, I am your host here at Making Leader Moves, and just to let you know, my name is Giovanna Rosales. On today's show, we are going to talk about how to cultivar your comunidad and the power of community um, because one, clearly it's my favorite topic, but also, um, Alyssa cultivated her own community and found her own community, um, as an author. So we're just really excited to get the details on that as well as what she does. Um, and so without further ado, we are accompanied today by one of my favorite authors here at Making Me That Moves. Alyssa Reynoso Morris. Alyssa is a Black, Dominican, and Puerto Rican queer picture book author with three upcoming books. Ah! Her debut book is called Platanos Are Love, and it literally just came out yesterday. So we are so excited. Um, and it's going to be on her website, and we'll talk all about more on how you can get the book. But we're so excited to celebrate her launch with her. Um, and give her her flowers, which she rightfully deserves. Um, it is a delicious, ah, tongue tied there. So the book Platanos Are Amor is a delicious picture book about the way plantains shape Latinx culture, community, and family told through a young girl's experience in the kitchen with her abuela. And just to give you a little bit of more sense on how the tone and the warmthness of this book goes, I'm just going to read a little expert really quick. Um, Abuela says, platanos are love. And I thought they were food, but Abuela says they feed us in more ways than one. Oh my God. Like already a banger, already excited um, to get mine delivered. So here we are. Um, and I can't wait to talk more about it. Her second book, which is called The Bronx is My Home, comes out in on October 24th, 2023. Um, a picture book celebration of hometown pride, including the history, landscape, cuisines, cultures, and activities unique to the vibrant Bronx community. Hola, mi amiga, and welcome to Making Leader Moves. I am so excited to have you on the show. I know we spoke about the book that just launched yesterday, and I know that we are excited to see your book launch um, coming out in October. But please let us know your journey. We're so excited to hear about it. How did you end up here? Did you even ever fathom or dream of becoming an author um, with kids books? And yeah, just how... How are you here today? Thank you so much for having me. I'm like so excited. <laughs> I love your podcast. You have such a Aww. like gift for inviting really interesting, authentic speakers. So every every podcast, I'm just like, oh, oh, like, how are you gonna outdo yourself next? You know? Oh, <laughs> we love it. it's it's the comunidad. It's yeah. like all my peeps. It's it's the and obviously we're gonna talk about it more, but it's like the comunidad that you cultivate, the comunidad that you create. And so yeah. I am glad to have you now be part of my community and Me I too. and yours. And yes, just like creating more <laughs> phenomenal shit. Um, you just created some phenomenal stuff. So so yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's it was funny as you were reading the description of Platanos, like literally, like community is in the description, right? I mean, like, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, in terms of like, is this where I thought I would be? Yes and no. Um, I actually, I'm gonna share something fun. Mm -hmm. This is the first book I ever wrote when I was seven years old. It's called oh a God. good a good writer. Got it. And, <laughs> and in on. it, I dedicated it to my mom, of course. And in it, I wrote, someday I will be a writer. I love to make books. And I talk about why I love books, because I can go anywhere. I can be anything. Writing is magic. Literally, writing is like magic, I wrote in here. I was mm -hmm. seven. And then I wrote, when I grow up, I will be a famous author. I will make lots I will make a lot of books so everyone could read them. I will give some of my books to children that don't have books. Literally, like cannot make this up. Like, that's what I wrote at seven. So 
Yes, Let the I'm tears just start flowing now. Y'all, if you hear sniffles in the background, it's me. It's me crying joy. It's me crying tears of fulfillment. I mean, talk about prophecy being fulfilled at seven. Like, seven. Yeah. seven. Mujer, you knew who you were at seven. And then I got lost. <laughs> Story right, of our as lives. we all do. Yes. The pressure, like, as a first-gen Latina, the pressure of, like, you have to be a doctor or a lawyer, like, mm. you know, like, I had to be more realistic. And also, like, I didn't have any authors in my life. So I'm just like, I don't, I don't know what that looks like. Yes. I don't know how to do that. I yes. only thought only, like, old dead white men were authors, you know, <laughs> with the exception of, like, Julia Alvarez and Sandra Cisneros and, you know, Jacqueline Woodson. But sometimes we don't relate to those stories because we cannot, all Latinas can't be put into a specific box. And, wow. like, yes, I was able to resonate with a lot of what they were saying, especially um, coming from Chicago, like, the streets that were on there. I was like, oh, yeah, yes, I'm playing um, soccer right now on that street. But... It is, like you say, even though we did have a handful, right? If that. If that. um, that. Some of that stuff wasn't resonating with us. Yeah, exactly. And so it was like one of those things I wanted since I was seven. I was always journaling. I was always writing. But I traded that in for more realistic, you know, career choice. Absolutely. Um, And then it wasn't actually until I got pregnant with my daughter I was putting together her library. I was super excited to put together her library. And then the excitement turned into rage. Yeah. (laughs) Just to see that like, okay, it's been over 30 years. Mm. And where are our books? Like, Mm. why are we, where are our books about our experiences, our culture? Like, it hasn't gotten that much better since when I was a little girl. Yes, there's more representation now, but it's still not enough. Exactly. And so I was super preggers and really hormonal. And I told my mom, I called my mom, my mom's a teacher. And I was like, no ha cambiado, mami. And she's like, oh, y tú estás sorprendida. I'm like, but like it's been my whole life. It's been 30, yeah. 30 years. I thought by now. She's like, and I was like so angry. She's like, ¿Qué va a hacer? Like, why are you? ¿Por qué me estás jodiendo? Like, why are you calling me? I got kids to teach. What are you gonna do? Why are you calling me? Right. And I was like, Mom. get to the point. <laughs> Is what she was. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write my own book. And she's like, por fin, about time, right? Because she had. <gasps> Finally, she had realized like, okay, I wasn't happy doing the thing that I was supposed to do, going mm-hmm. down the path I was supposed to go down. Right. That wasn't serving me. That wasn't bringing me joy. Right. And so, yeah, I found my way back to seven-year-old Alyssa. Oh. And now I can say I have three books coming out. Oh, my <laughs> well, goodness. One book that already came out and two books yes. that are coming out. So, yeah, it's it's exciting. <laughs> I, I love it. I, it's such a... It's such a, it's such a, it's such a great full circle moment for you because not only did you realize that what you were doing, aka corporate America, wasn't serving you, it was beyond hindering you, um, putting you in like mental spaces that you were just like, yo, qué pasa? Um, But your mom acknowledging that. And giving you, in her own way, in her own form of love, telling you, I understand, go for what you want to go for. Right? She, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, like some moms are super yeah. loving and other ones are like, yes, go, go. Like, you need to do what you need to do. And so that's such a beautiful moment, not only for yourself, but also her and realizing, like, what I thought was the best for my child was not necessarily the best for my child. Right. And so here we are, you creating books for your community and having your mom's blessing, which I know sometimes we don't get and that's okay. But when you do get it, um, you appreciate La Bendición that much more. I mean, you hold it near to your heart. So I'm so, I'm so excited and I'm so happy for you. And um, (laughs) yeah, like 
it's true it's true and you, first of all shout out to you for making a, your baby a library like that i was like oh okay let's let's take notes on thea mode like if, we, <laughs> if there's any new ones coming I like you a list i can send you like yes. so many book recommendations to make it easy for you yeah, yeah, yeah. you wouldn't have mm -hmm. even thought and i'm a reader like i'm a reader and i would have never thought that so the fact that that was your aha moment too was like you know what Aquí está la bendición de mamá, but also like I need to make sure that she is represented and that these books are are getting out here and are ready yeah. for her when she gets here. And I used to read to her even when she was in my womb. Oh. So, you know, that I would read all these books to her that I loved by like Tammy Charles and mm -hmm. Julia Alvarez. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was really amazing to see these books. But then I was just like, but I want more. There's, there's more. You there's, know? More. <laughs> there's more. There's always more to give. Um, yeah. And so having said that, when did you realize, Alyssa, it is your time to share your stories, which in essence is a gift to the world? Well, I love was that. it yeah. that specific moment? Um, or was there else something kind of creeping up before that? And that was like the aha moment. That's such a good question. Honestly, I think, unfortunately, as a Black Latina, as a woman of color, like, I think we have so much internalized negativity that we have to push yeah. back, that we have to hear things more than once to yeah. finally, like, take that leap of faith. Not all, but, like, that was at least my experience. Like, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I can't tell you how many times people told me, like, oh, this is a book. Oh, you should be a writer. Oh, you're such a good writer, right? And the, those are the signs, right? So it's crazy when, like, when you pray or when you ask for signs and they're thrown at your face, literally, and tú, tú, tú todavía ciega, right? Like, you're still blind, like, Totally. Yes, Totally. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, me, Joe, okay. Uh, you're just trying to be nice. You're just flattering me, right? Exactly. Um, but yeah, then I think I'm a I'm a double fire sign. I'm an Aries Leo. Ooh. So um, I think the rage was what was that final push, right? Like I had that affirmation several times from different people in different spaces telling mm -hmm. me that I should but then finally like seeing like but like there are literally no books about the types of topics that I want to read about with my daughter yes. so you know like the Bronx is my home I wrote that as a love letter to the Bronx because mm -hmm. everything that you read about the Bronx is a negative depiction of the Bronx for the most part mm -hmm. and I was just like I want to change that narrative I grew up in the Bronx I love the Bronx I have love for my borough yeah. like so that's why I wrote it. I was like, it's missing. It's missing in the narrative. It doesn't exist. And I'm going to change that. Same thing with Black Enough for Love. When I wrote Black Enough for Love in 2019, okay, which publishing is really slow. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Coming out, you know, it came out in 2023, but yes. I started writing it actually in 2018, you know, mm -hmm. in like honesty. Um, there were zero books about Platanos. No yeah. book. But there's like 101 books about chicken noodle soup and potatoes. You know, I love chicken noodle soup. I love cookies. Potatoes. Yeah. Right. But it's just like, this is a food that so many people in the Caribbean, in Central America, in Latin America, in Africa, you know, like eat. And how are there like zero books about it? You know, so fortunately, I was like, I'm changing this. And I actually, I'm going to put a, a quick plug for yeah. two of my other author friends that also wrote books about platanos that we were like, but they're all different. So like, I, I think of them as like Pokemon cards, like collect I them all. That. You gotta so collect Luz, them all, yes. Um, Luz wrote The Secret of the Platano and it's it's uh, it's so lyrical and beautiful and um, very different, but lots of fun. Um, and then Lise's book, Platanos go with everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it's such a sweet book. It's fun. It's also very like poetic in style. And then you know what sets mine apart from these two is that mine talks more about like our ancestors and the resilience oh. of our ancestors and everything that they needed to overcome 
before we were able to share food together at a table, right? So yeah, they're they're like Pokemon cards. You gotta collect them all. <laughs> but girl, what you're liter what you literally just showed is what a lot of I feel like especially Latina women like we have to overcome is that there is space for everyone at the table. Yes. I'm always and there could probably out. be at least at least like 15 other books about platanos at least and it's all going to be different because everyone's writing it from a different perspective yep and everyone has a different meaning for different objects yep and so when you see that like tit for tat or that like oh we can't share resources we can't share tools it's like nana no yes we can. operate Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so I just want to give a shout out to you right now for putting other other Latina women, literally other authors out there writing about, quote unquote, the same subject. But all they also have the same space and everyone here was published and everyone is getting their their like audience. Right. Yeah. And everyone is growing enough. in their awareness. And so. It's like, you know, my grandma and my mom always say, they, well, my grandma always used to say this. My mom still says this, like, donde comen uno, comen dos. And it's true. And so shout out to you for making it, like, for literally doing that live and being like, <laughs> I'm just shout out my peeps. Like, that's how we build community, right? Like, you're I the expert it. and I see you do it all the time. And I'm just like, yeah, this is how we do it. We got to lift each other up because they're not going to, if we're that's not doing it for each other, then. <laughs> I hear you. I, I'm with it. I'm with it. And so my question to you is, um, what made you realize I have to make these? Because like seven-year-old Alyssa said, I'm going to be an author. Mm -hmm. And then Rabia came as you were building the library for your child. See. Was that the moment or was it maybe some, some place before that time? that you realize um, I have to make these stories child friendly. Like why the emphasis on children's books? Yeah, good question. I, mm -hmm. I want to write across all genres. I okay. do want to write like currently I write picture books, but I want to okay. write middle grade. I want to mm -hmm. write YA. I see like a YA romance in my future, you know, like <laughs> Not there yet, yes. but it, it's, it's brewing in my brain. So. Listen, I'm in my best senora era. So you let me know when that book comes out and I'll have it with my little tecito and I'll be here for it, for the eroticness of it all. Oh, yeah. I mean, I really <laughs> love romance. I don't know if I can write it yet, but one pro tip that I will share is for anyone who wants to write a book, mm -hmm. one, you can do it. Two, you have to read a lot in your genre. So right now I am living my best life and I am reading all the YA romance. And I'm just like, ooh, ooh yes. you know? <laughs> I'm loving it. Take so me I back to that, that simple before. crush life. I miss it. <laughs> I know that's what it is. It's like the, the innocent, sweet love. Yeah, I mean, like literally this whole part of my shelf is all like YA romance. Like, <laughs> I love it. Um, and I do want to, I've been working on an adult memoir for like, the better part of 10 years. Okay. Which God knows when I'll finish that one. Cause it's just like every chapter is very emotionally taxing. Um, it's evolution. It's going to be yeah. an evolution book. Exactly. But I think the reason why I decided to focus on children's books specifically is because yeah, part of it is because I'm a mom, mm -hmm. but the main part is because I, life is hard. Yes. Adulting is hard. Being I hate it here sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like I was in such a rush to grow up, you know, and then now I'm here and I'm just like, I you had a good mia, tu no sabia. And so it's my opportunity to be like transported back mm. to like that, that joy, that seven-year-old Alyssa, right? That that wonder, that imagination, that uh, eternal optimism, that like recklessness too just like being like yeah like I feel like I was so bold you know before yes. it was like beaten out of me by the nuns you know I know yes you, like we, we, we talked about going to Catholic school in the previous yes episode. girl we did so you know I was like Bien agenda, tu sabe. and so it just it's going it, it it enables me to go back to that 
that version of Alyssa, right? It sounds like you are literally living your best inner child moment. And a lot of us are scared to go back there, heal her, find her, talk to her, tell her it's okay. Tell her it's okay to be brave. Tell her it's okay to start in la gozadera. Tell her that it's okay. Because we do. We get so bombarded in this chaos of what becomes adult adulting or adult life. And you... Yeah, I mean, right? Like, let's say it's no, know, that's it. The child, it. right? It's like yeah. ahora soy mama, but also like, no, I'm healing my inner child, and I'm doing it on my own terms with my own sazon, with my own love, and my own cackles. Like, damn, girl. now I'm like, that's okay, it. how am I gonna fix my inner child? I love this. If you want to write a children's book, like, I got great. you. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> If you ever want to write a children's book, I got you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I love and I love that you had like mentioned it before too, because like you had mentioned how Pratano is not only is like a Caribbean thing, but like a Central American thing. And girl, like I'm half Central American. And shout out to Salvi's. Yes. Ah, uh, this is from Perky Cipota. Yes, it's my um supporting trans Salvi's live shirt. But we eat a lot of platano and then like even different forms of platano. So it's just like even the right, right, even though I might not be Caribbean, like I can still resonate because Lord knows I eat that stuff more than I should. <laughs> it's so good. It's so yeah. good. And you know what? Maybe not even more than I should. I deserve it. So there we go. You do. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. That's a form of self-love. Yes. Literally. Absolutely. Well, and the fun fun part was, even though I didn't make it into this version of the book, because mm-hmm. Children's books are shorter. I had mm-hmm. so much fun researching like how different oh. cultures eat platanos. Yes. You know, and it's just like the different words for everything. It just shows mm-hmm. how rich our culture is. Like, you know, Dominicans and Puerto Ricans call them tostones. In mm-hmm. Colombia, they call them patacones. And mm-hmm. I just like, I love saying that word. I love saying patacones. <laughs> like, it's just so much fun. It just, mm, the way it comes out, you know? Rolls off then, the tongue. It does. And like Dominicans, we call it mangu. Which is like when you mash it, you boil it, you yes. mash it. In Brazil, I love me some good mango. I love mango. So love good. Mango. In Brazil, they call it fufu. And I think in Cuba too. Love it. And it's originally from Nigeria. So, like, our African ancestors brought plantains over. And this is like, that's one of the like topics that I touch on in a like child friendly way that it's like, right these are our ancestors let's pay homage to them and their resilience and they are the reason why we are where we are right now and i think that's such like that goes to show how much of a brilliant writer you are not only are we talking about these um, like this amazing fruit or food and like what it can do and how it brings us together but also doing the research and doing the work for a children's book and being like Let's all take a pause because in here, we're going to speak about the real shit that happened, which is them, like you said, bringing it over here um, yeah. and surviving and literally bringing their cultura with them um, at a time when they had nothing. So mm-hmm. paying homage and then showing children at such a young age how important yeah. it is and you still are not alone. Like you yeah. are who you are in certain ways because of your ancestors um, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and everything that they did. So being able to teach that to children at such a young age, which we didn't get the opportunity to have because that we didn't have those books. Um, I, it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. It's I exciting. It. It I mean, exciting. I, my gra- like I'll share one more thing. My grandmother had a second grade education mm-hmm. because she grew up in the Dominican Republic and they didn't invest in girls. They still mm-hmm. don't really, but especially yeah. back then in her generation. And, but she's always pushed education. She was always like, education is super important. Education is super important. Fast forward to my mom. My mom came here at 19. She didn't know English. She taught herself. She enrolled in school she got she went to school she became a teacher mm-hmm. 
and specifically like an ESL teacher. And she mm-hmm. also instilled the importance of writing and the importance of education. And even though she wanted me, like she was pushing me toward law school, you know, she was still like, yeah. education is, is super important. And it was one time when I was like talking about this with, with my editor, shout out to mm-hmm. my editor, um, Alex, love you. Um, it's crazy how like, how much has changed in just three generations from my grandmother's generation where she didn't go to school. She had to teach herself how to read and write by memorizing scripture in the Mm -hmm. church to my mom becoming an educator. And now I'm a published author. Like, right? Like we can do it. Like we are resilient. We are adaptable. We are amazing. The fact that we're here still, despite everything that we've had to overcome, Mm. like and still are overcoming. Like it doesn't end. It doesn't end. (laughs) Let's talk about that. It doesn't end. It doesn't. I'm gonna drop a couple statistics real quick. Only one percent of submitted manuscripts are actually published. Of that one percent. Only 20% are stories from people of color. So Latinos, like Black, African American. All um, combined. 20% all combined. Yeah. Native American, LGBTQA, all combined. Which, like, come on. Like, we're all smart here. We know statistically that's not representative of our population. Yeah. So I am 1%. I am 20% of 1%. And I wonder how much of that 20%, like if they were to break it down, right? Like indigenous publishers. 6% Latin. are Latin. How much? 6%. Yeah, stop. Are Latin. And I identify as a Black Latina. Yeah. So like even that representation is even smaller. It's so small that they don't even track it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Okay. Well, then we're gonna start tracking your metas because this, like, it, and then we'll publish. We'll just publish it. We'll just like throw it out there because no, like that's not cool. How come? How come no one's doing the statistics for this? Like that's un. It's unfair. It's unfair. Yeah, and it, I think it's just you. harder to like measure the intersections, right? Because like yeah. Latin is like all Latin, but they're not mm-hmm. like tracking like Afro Latinos or mm-hmm. they're not tracking like Indigenous Latino. Like they're mm-hmm. not that's not being incorporated into the narrative yet, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but yeah, it just goes to show like we have to keep fighting because there's still so much work that needs to be done. Yes. Yes. And like, even though you are breaking barriers, which is amazing, you as well need to take time to rest, right? You as well <laughs> need time to heal (laughs) while you are researching because there's just so much that's thrown at you um and i'm actually reading or i'm listening to the audio rest is resistance the manifesto love it the manifesto yes it's it's my second time listening to it because the first time i was just i cried so much because of how much truth um was just like spoken out that Mm -hmm. all the emotions were rushing but I, and I just like really want to point that out for anyone who's listening and like doing the work. Like we're all doing the work, but we also need to take time for ourselves and just rest because you you won't make it. Like mm-hmm. no one will make it. Mm-hmm. And we're always pushed to grind. And she even taught right, like we like she talks about the grind culture and how like yeah some of these um messages that like you'll see in people's inboxes like slay all day or like I'll rest when I'm six feet under. And you're like, wait, no, yeah, you, you, don't have to wait. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can do it now. So mm-hmm. even though we love breaking barriers, it's still very, very important to take time for us. Um, and it's very hard, very, very hard. But yes, that is important. But speaking, speaking on your book and the statistics that we were talking about, how important was it for you to write your books? in a little bit of Spanglish, Spanglish. a yeah. little bit of like bilingualness mm-hmm. um I, lo- I love it uh very resonating even I mean right even the podcast itself the titles are in Spanglish uh mm-hmm. we speak however we speak here um 
which is in español igual en inglés. Like, it's very Spanglish here. So how important was it for you to write your books in that tone and in that language? It was non-negotiable. When, like, can we, when can I we went repeat on that one more time for the people who didn't hear it in the back the first time? <laughs> it was non-negotiable. Drop mic. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Like, when I shared it with my agent... Mm -hmm. she did fortunately love my agent shout out to Caitlin love you love uh, she did not push back she loved it mm -hmm. and it was one of the things that we talked about that when we are submitting it to editors mm -hmm. I will not work with an editor I don't care what house they're from if they tell me to water it down mm. if they tell me to take it out if they tell me that is too much, I will find another ed editor. I don't care if it takes longer. Mm. It was. It's a part of my voice. It's how I talk. Mm -hmm. it's how I speak naturally, and it's how your I community mean, speaks. It's yeah. how they get a, how they get their messages across to one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a and book for my community. So how are we going to be? Thank you. <laughs> The math ain't math in y'all. <laughs> exactly. And especially because like, as I was writing it, when I literally like, as I was writing it, when I was reading it out loud, I was like, this is how it sounds. This is how it's yeah. supposed to sound. And if someone tells me to change it, they don't get it. Mm. And I don't, I don't want them to be a part of the process as messed up as it sounds because publishing yeah. is really challenging and it's really cutthroat, but I need someone that's going to like cheerlead my work. And my agent did. So did my editor, Alex. Alex, I love you. Thank you so much. I also love my editor, Jessica. Jessica Anderson is my editor for The Bronx is My Home and for my mm -hmm. third book that's coming out um, called Gloriana Presente, a first day of school book. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of layers in that one too. Like It's like immigration and first day of school and finding your voice there's a lot of spanglish in that one too oh, um, here for it. so yeah it was non-negotiable I was like I can't work with you I'm sorry <laughs> oh, love it love it and was it hard was it hard to find people to work with since it was non-negotiable I actually I will say I lucked out okay because my agent and I did a lot of research mm. and we were really mindful of who we submitted to so we submitted specifically yeah we were super intentional because publishing is full of a lot of rejection okay so we didn't need to send it to a edit an editor that we didn't think was going to get it yeah and i mean so not wasting your energy right not wasting your time and not 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 getting those rejection letters that you knew you were going to get anyway since they don't understand the concept and then now you're in like a spiral of am i worthy am i good enough like look at look at you shout out to you shout out to you for not having yourself go through that mental spiral it didn't make sense i was like no! i have enough negativity in my life and so that we knew we knew my editor, Jessica, would be a good editor because she specifically likes manuscripts that are like intersectional. Um, like Jessica's originally from Canada and in Canada, mm. they speak multiple languages growing up in school. And mm -hmm. so um, she loves books that do that, that have that like cross-cultural exchange. We mm -hmm. also knew that my editor, Alex, was going to be a good fit because mm -hmm. Alex loves um having like diverse representation like it's very specifically written in her manuscript wish list um okay. and she's half cuban so she's like i want more of that oh, right so right. that also helped she's half mm -hmm. cuban so she, she and she when she acquired it she was like oh my god this reminds me of cooking with my abuela right Aww. so it made sense and i'm so grateful to both of them i, I love, love you it. jessica i love you alex <laughs> <laughs> thank you you're the best editors ever <laughs> <laughs> love to hear it love to hear that um that you had such a great like support system and a great group but even with all the support and all the love there are always times in your lifetime that you are going to have bumps on the road 
hiccups, if you will. Yeah. And here at Making Leader Moves, we love to normalize being human. That's mm-hmm. just part of who we are. Yeah. And so if I can ask you, when was it time? And it can be whether it was through writing the books, the, that process, or mm-hmm. another time in your life where you did hit a bump on the road. Um, it was a difficult time, but you didn't let that deter you from your ultimate vision for yeah. yourself. Absolutely. Thank you. I love this question. Mm-hmm. Uh the struggle is real. I used to always say that and I still still say it. I still believe it. Yeah. For, there were a lot of hiccups, actually. Like, as I've said before, publishing is really hard. It's really competitive. This mm-hmm. was a five-year journey, y'all. Wow. Like, it was full and of Thank you lot. for being so real about that because that's year journey. a long time. Yeah. It's a long time. It's a long time to have patience. It's a long time to have compassion. It's a long time to be vulnerable. Um, I do it for like 24 hours and I'm spent. So <laughs> look at look at you doing it for five years. It's a lot. It From is. the time that you write the manuscript, then you have to, you know, hopefully you have a good critique group where like you're able to provide each other with honest feedback to make the manuscript better. You know, that's ch- that's hard mm-hmm. <laughs> having to do that. Um, then to the time that you're ready to query agents, mm. that's all, that was hard. That was full of a lot of rejection. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. Querying to agents is so hard. I'm mm-hmm. so grateful for my agent. But before I got Caitlin, I got a lot of no's. <laughs> and it was like, okay, where's my wine? <laughs> Like, I know I'm a children's book author, but I'm human. I need my wine. Um, and, and we're asking for the bottle, not the glass here. Yeah. La botella. Dame la botella entera. Pasame la botella. <laughs> like, seriously. Um, and then, you know, the process of, like, fortunately, I got really lucky with my editors. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also been really hard. Like now that the book is like come about like, you know, the, the first book came out and my second book is going to come out. It's available mm-hmm. for pre-order. Um, it's It's been hard like promoting it too because yeah. that takes a lot of time and energy. And, um, you know, I'm grateful for my publisher that does like the bigger things like figuring out Amazon and figuring out Barnes and Nobles and, you know, working with libraries and stuff. But I've had to learn how to like, market I've had to learn about branding I've had to learn about like website development and all this stuff that I was not ready for I was like I want to write books I never said I wanted to be an entrepreneur girl that part (laughs) I was like I got to know to write books but I didn't sign up for this yeah shout out oh I didn't know it came with all this other stuff I just want to be here Yeah. yeah Yeah. yeah. So like shout out to Ashley, author of Hey and Training for writing her book, because it really helped me figure that part yeah. of the industry out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, there's just been hurdles every step of the way. There's been a lot of rejection every step of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but ultimately, like whenever I get a rejection, whenever someone's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just like, mm-hmm. okay, I drink my bottle of wine. <laughs> and I think back to my why. Mm. Why am I doing this? I am doing this for seven-year-old Alyssa. And I'm doing this for the other black and brown Latinos that don't see their culture on the page. They didn't grow up seeing their face on the page. You know, one of my favorite authors, Jason Reynolds said, I write for all children but I write to black children. Right? Right? Oh, so I write. I love all it. Children. I do. I write for all children. I loved me some Harry Potter back in the day, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I, so my book is for everyone. Everyone can read it, mm-hmm. but it's written to the little Alyssa's that didn't see their face and their culture and their food and their family and their history on the page. Mm. 
That's so much to intake because there's so much beauty in that sentence because that's all real and that's all true. And it's just amazing. It's amazing to not let yourself get torn down, especially with how long of a process it was, right? Like five years and just getting rejection after rejection um, along the way. And that, that shit hurts. Like if I have, if I've gotten mm -hmm. way too many like rejections when it comes to like proposals and stuff, I'm going to be honest, like, I'll just take a day. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I'm yeah. done. Like yeah. I'm going to take off Thursday. Like I'm for sure going to take off Friday, possibly Thursday half day <laughs> because it's just so much. And the fact yeah. that the fact that you know your why and have it so solidified that that's your ammo, your motivation to keep going is very, it's very empowering. And it's very honest because it should, it's a shit show out there. It's hard. And it's it happens hard. with every book. You think that once you're, you know, it does get a little bit easier once you have a book under your belt. Okay. You know, but like, I've had to go through rejections for all of my books. Oh my goodness. You know, yeah. like I have yeah. three books that are, coming out technically four with the Spanish the full Spanish version of Platanos are love mm -hmm. Los Platanos son amor so two books this year you know two books next year and more I can't share details that there are Ooh. things happening um, in the background <laughs> <laughs> um, but for every book that yes. it's been that process and it has there has been rejection and there has been a lot of a lot. There's just a lot. I think one thing that's also particularly triggering is when you're in the wrong groups. Mm. When I first started, some of the critique groups that I was in, yeah, I was the only person of color. I was the only Latina. And it sometimes they just didn't get it. Yeah. And Absolutely. I would like, you know, try to like not take it personal and be objective and be open to their feedback and a lot of it was good but not all of it was good because some of it was just like oh you just don't get it right and that's and that's you like almost following your intuition being like I hear you but I don't feel you and that's cool for you but that's not gonna work for me and even that part alone is um, in the beginning, it's really it's kind of a, it's a struggle, especially mm -hmm. when you're the only person in that room looking a specific mm -hmm. way, yep. um, because you you do you want to be part of that community, right? You want to yeah. be part of the um, inclusion, but yet you feel excluded. And so yep. there comes a point where you're like, as you said, like, where you're like, OK, they just they didn't get it and that was cool for them but like I'm still do me and that's very <laughs> empowering because I feel like sometimes and, and, I, and I speak for myself because I've done this before where I'm like oh I want to be included or like I want to be part of this so let me modify or let me change and it's like girl you ain't even have you don't even want to be here now because <laughs> you can't be yourself so what the right. hell mm -hmm. right yeah so and it's, it's especially hard at the beginning because you're like is it because I don't know what I'm doing or is it, you know what I mean? Like, because mm -hmm. like, yeah. you just don't get it. And it, it, it's, it's a little hard at yeah. first. It's well, it's still hard, but especially at the beginning that that part is really hard. Well, like figuring it's new, out. It's new waters you're navigating. Now you're like, all right, I'm a pro. Like, let's go. <laughs> if you like, if you don't get it, that's just on you. Like we, I'm moving. Are you hopping on the train or no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, ba it's basically you, yeah, like becoming more empowered with being secure of, of what you are building yeah. for yourself, for your family, and for everyone else in your community. Yeah. Exactly. So shout out to you. <laughs> um, and speaking on community, what or how did how do we find communities and resources for support if we ourselves want to become writers and publish our stories one day? This is my favorite question. I'm so ready. Ah! Okay. <laughs> I'm so ready. Okay, so shout out to Las Musas. Las Musas okay. has a mentorship program mm -hmm. in which they pair you with an author and mm -hmm. you work on your manuscript together. I was a Musa 
I was an hermana. Well, we actually, we call it in Musa hermana. Like, tell me that's not oh, the cutest. Musa hermana. So I was, a, I was an hermana and I was mentored by the prolific, award-winning author, Dana Balba Higuera. <laughs> Shout out to Dana. Oh. Like, it now has like 101 stickers because she's gotten the Pura Bell Prey and the Newberry, but I got it before it got all the awards. So that's oh why it doesn't have them here. I got first edition. Yeah. So yeah. Donna, <laughs> Donna Barba Higuera, it's like sci-fi, post-apocalyptic world, space, like all of my sci-fi fans. Please and thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, and then she also wrote a contemporary. Lupe Wong won't dance and the main character mm -hmm. is Mexican and Chinese so I just like love that intersectionality oh. between the two cultures it's just and it's funny mm -hmm. it's funny like it's funny it's just funny y'all like <laughs> a good laugh it's, Lupe will got have you on the floor um so shout out to Las Musas that's one mm -hmm. the other is um, we need diverse books. We need diverse books has a ton of resources. They host workshops and they also have a mentorship program and um, they do a ton of stuff. Um, to what really was it called again? We need diverse books. Okay. Um, they are amazing. And then another organization is actually the organization that I work for in addition to being an author. Um it's called The Word, A Storytelling Sanctuary. I'll put this in the notes. Yep. Um, so The Word, basically like our whole mission is to create literary spaces that are inclusive and that uplift like marginalized communities. And they also have a mentorship program. But their mentorship wow. program is super cool because dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I'm like, <"Hey, laughs> bro, bro, please, bro, bro. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> unlike other mentorship programs that pair you with an editor, I mean, that pair you with an agent with with a writer. Sorry, I'm getting too excited. That pair mm -hmm. you with another author, which super super helpful. Yes. The words mentorship program actually pairs you up with an editor that actually has the ability to potentially acquire your manuscript if they like it. That's not the end goal of mm -hmm. the mentorship. The goal of the mentorship is to get your manuscript as ready as possible for either the querying process to acquire an agent or the submission process to acquire an editor. But there have been some mentees mm -hmm. that have gotten their work acquired by an editor through the program. Mm -hmm. I actually got one of my editors through the program. And now I run the program. So okay. <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> Calling all it's your fabulous cool. ancestors. Shout out to you. Only just running the program for all. Like, are you kidding me? No. Like, this is full amazing. circle, full circle, right? Like, I was a mentee. And I did it, and my editor acquired two of my books, one of them being The Bronx is My Home, mm -hmm. and then the third one being Gloriana Presente, first day of school book. And now I'm, like, running it. So oh, exciting. So many full circle moments for you. <laughs> I am here for it. I need some of that juju because I'm ready to close some of my circles. In I got my you. Life. Sending Take it your it way. In, <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I'm like, yo, this is amazing. Um, and thank you and so much. The other thing I will share, yeah. sorry, one more thing no, is please. support your independent bookstores. Okay. Support your independent Yes, bookstores. you just did an event. Um, not too long ago. Yes. So, um, like, obviously, like, the best way to support an author is to buy their book. And however you buy their book is great, wonderful. But I am partial to encouraging people to buy our books from independent bookstores because they work really hard to like curate mm -hmm. books for our community. Shout out to mm -hmm. Café con Libros. Shout out to Duende District. Shout out to Julia de Burgos. Shout out to The Lit Bar. These are bookstores that are owned by us mm -hmm. that are making it a point to buy books that feature our experience and they are making space for our books on the shelf. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas mm. in other bookstores, we're an afterthought. Yes. With these independent bookstores, we're forefront of mind. We are the books that they are putting on their shelves. Mm. So support your indies. They're super important. Um, yeah, that's how I feel my community. Las Musas, The Word, We Need Diverse Books, and shout out to independent bookstores. Oh, love it. Love it. Um, and thank you for sharing those resources. I mean, those are very, very important, especially for people who have been dabbling with the idea or want to get started but have no clue as to where to even start. So appreciate you sharing those very, very insightful and like amazing programs. It's not just like, here are the resources. It's like, this is what these programs will do. If like, if you're in, and I'm pretty sure like they'll even talk to people if they're even thinking about it, right? Yeah, that's what okay. we do. You contact us on, you know, like if you contact Las Musas or We Need Diverse Books or any of them, um, I'm actually like on my website, I'm putting together a blog of like mm -hmm. a whole list of mentorship oh. programs. Beautiful. So find me on the interweb. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I'll have a whole list for y'all. Oh, love um, it. And if you contact any of them, they usually have like like an info or a mentorship email. Mm -hmm. You can just ask them like, am I eligible? Do I qualify? Like any questions that you have. And that's literally what we're, we're supposed to do. We're supposed to field your questions and help you figure out what to do. I love it. Um, so those resources were obviously your community when it came to your author journey. Are there any other communities that you are part of that also, and they don't have to help you with like the author part, um, but are there any other communities that help you feel empowered or help, um, I don't know how to wear this, like maybe not give you the strength, but give you, but give you the space to be like, okay, this is what I'm thinking, or this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm doing. And how did you find your communities for yeah, yourself no, specifically? That's super, super good question. Um, my community, a lot of it came from being in the wrong spaces. Like oh. I often am the one that looks like me in spaces. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, usually either the only Latina or the only Black person or the only one mm -hmm. that's both. And then I'm all of a sudden like the supposed to be the poster child for all mm. things black and all things Latina. And I'm supposed to be like the spokesperson for the whole culture. And I'm just like, no, don't put me in that box, boo. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, you don't have the time. I mean, you really, like it's not. You yeah, don't pay. Yeah. Hello. So much, yeah. No, I feel you. I um, it's called a consulting fee. Hello. Thank Mike. you. you know? um, We're not here to pick my brain, y'all. <laughs> not, 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 not. It's a fee. There's a charge. Well, and I'm happy to share resources for free, but like you have, we have to pour into each other, right? And that's when I, that's how I found my community. It were, yeah. there were people that were interested in learning new things and challenging themselves. And so I would be in spaces and I would, I, I'd find like the other nerd that's like talking <laughs> about like stuff. I also do gravitate double fire sign here so I do gravitate to people that are angry because I, I do think sometimes that people that are angry are like very motivated to change things so la que se ta la, the person who que ta gritando por allá I'm like hola quieres ser amigas no, oh. <laughs> let's talk about how effed up things are <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we bond over the fuckery right rage and bonding then... I love it rage <laughs> bonding like that's your thing that's yeah. your thing <laughs> y'all this is a rage bonder so if y'all have rage feel free <laughs> find me up find me on the socials and um yeah no we can be like mad about the state of banning books we can be mad mm -hmm. about like the war on women's bodies we could be mad about you know like the inequalities that trans individuals face on a daily yeah. basis you know what I mean I was a political science major for the record so it makes sense right like yeah rage rage rage, rage. is my mm -hmm. and then we like <laughs> but I'm also very like hopeful bubbly optimistic person so it's like we would be angry about things and then we'd be like okay so what are we gonna do about it right and yeah. then so yeah, I find the person that's screaming in the room and then we bond over that. And then we're like, okay, so what are we going to do about this? Cause this ain't it, <laughs> I love you it. know? Yeah, <laughs> no, that's great. And it's very you. So like if anyone else who is listening is also a rager, um, 
please feel free to take a list of advice and just like go up to those other people or like if you see someone who's a rager like there you go here we go we're all gonna be <laughs> um besties after this like got fed talking about rage and solutions together i love that okay. rage and solutions Ooh. rage and solutions yeah <laughs> Um, Alyssa, I don't know how to thank you enough for your time and for sharing your expertise, sharing your resources here con la comunidad at Making Me Their Moves. It means so much to us um, for, yeah, just providing us all of this wisdom, knowledge, gem, like you gem dropped so much. And we just really appreciate you being here for the Latina community and the Latinas here who want, who have been thinking about becoming authors and who want to be authors. Um, I obviously, right. You have a few things that are already scheduled to come out. You already have some things down the pipeline, but as you said, there are some things behind closed curtains and I am pretty sure our followers would want to know more about you and how to keep up with you. So how do we do that? What's the best way to keep in contact with you? Yeah, thank you. So the yes. best way to follow me is on Instagram and Twitter. Those are the platforms that I'm most active on. Mm -hmm. So find me there at A. Reynoso Morris. So mm -hmm. A-R-E-Y-N-O-S-O-M-O-R-R-I-S. Um, <laughs> and actually the best way to contact me, yeah. um, is through my website. So if you go on my website, which is author a l y s s a author, a u t h o r dot com, no punctuation or anything in between Alyssa author.com, Alyssa author.com, um, mm -hmm. go on the contact page. And if you have questions, you can, you get shuffled right into my inbox. Um, I also have like a FAQ resource page on my website. So try it. to like peruse that if you have any questions about publishing and stuff before you, like if there's any questions that you have, because I'm always sharing information on like my FAQs and my blog about publishing and the journey and how awesome and traumatizing it is at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all of it, right? You got to talk it. about the good and the bad. I'm and yeah. the ugly. The good, yeah. the bad, the ugly, all of it. If you want that, it's there. Um, and then obviously the best way to like support your fellow authors is to either order their books, um, ideally at your independent bookstore. If you can't order their books, request them at the library. Ooh. That's super important. I can't buy all the books that I want. I would be in like severe debt if I did. Like, <laughs> look at my bookshelf. Like, I buy <laughs> as many as I can, but I can't buy all of the books that I want. So Absolutely. for the books that I can't buy, I request them at the library. And mm -hmm. then I borrow them from the library. That does count as a book sale for the author. And oh. every time, yeah, it helps. And every time you borrow the book, that's what keeps those books in circulation. So oh. request their, their book at the library. Like I know it's hard to buy all the books. So yeah. I don't send it when people can't, but request it from your local library. Um, I didn't even know that was like a, a thing, thing, which is great yeah. to know. Do you by any chance know off the top of your head if that if it works the same with audiobooks? No, no, um, I was saying for audiobooks. Yeah, you it does. So all you need is your library card. Oh and yeah, no, because like I I have uh, that's how I, I'm listening to Rest is Resistance um, mm -hmm. as an audiobook. So I'm my question is like you know how you were saying it helps with the circulation and yeah. like it helps us for sales as far as having the physical, does it work the same for audiobooks as well? It does. I don't okay. know exactly what the percentages are and okay. how that yeah. works. And it's, mm -hmm. it varies per contract, per genre. There's a lot of like factors, mm -hmm. but yes, it does help authors oh, okay. when you borrow their library, their audio book from the library. And when you request their book to be acquired by their library, whether it's the hard copy or the, you know, audio book copy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right on. Um, <laughs> I love no, I love it. I actually started um, like when I when when I'm not doing the podcast or like have to show up for meetings, I started going to the library because I needed a change of scenery, um, a change of pace. Yeah. I mean, you live on the East Coast, you know how winter is. I do, and you're like, I feel trapped, 
yeah. Mm -hmm. So I actually started going to the library and um, I also am starting to get really hyped about this. So I'm like planning my summers with my bike, visiting Ooh. other libraries. I have a whole, I y'all like, yes. let me, I mean, obviously nerd alert, uh, which is cool. Again, I'm living my best senora era. And so I'm so excited for the spring to come because I have a bike. I am like, Tires I love are ready. Them. I love them. <laughs> like I already have my routes for the different libraries I want to hit up. I love this. You need to keep us posted on this. You need to keep me posted on this because I, 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 I love this. You know what? When that time comes, like I definitely will be documenting the days of like yeah. here's my bike ride, here's my bike your route, here are my snacks. Because yeah. um, that's what I do. Like I take my snacks. I take two two big canteens of water. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I make it a whole day event now. And you get so yeah. much done, girl. Like, that's another thing. I yeah. literally had texted um, a girlfriend, Paulette, and I was like, I got, like, a whole month's worth of work done in three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. Make it make sense. Like, mm -hmm. it was great. Um, mm -hmm. So shout out to libraries. Love shout the out library. Love and the shout library. Out, actually, shout out to the New York Public Library. Love y'all. Mm -hmm. because they bought 35 copies of my book that are available at 35 different branches in New York. So shout out to the New York Public Library. I love you. The other thing that they did that's dope, even if you don't live in New York, you can okay. still get a New York Public Library card. They what? started doing that. Yes. They started doing that because these racist people were banning books. These anti-LGBTQ like LGBTQ yeah people are banning books so they want to make sure that whether you live in florida where they're banning books like crazy or if you live in texas where they're banning books like crazy sorry i was a political science major so everything is political don't apologize there we ain't apologizing <laughs> here no time no you time no apologize. Florida, you can still borrow books with a new york public library card so I don't know of all of the logistics around it and how it, right, how right, exactly right. it works, but I have my New York Public Library card. I live in Philly now, um, and I still use my New York Public Library card. So, um, <laughs> well, guess who's gonna go get a New York Library card now? Yes, girl. Because I, I mean, I just need it. Like now, yeah. I have FOMO for not having this amazing resource and tool. So, um, and Ashley's always making fun of me. She's like, girl, like, you be on FOMO all the time. I'm like, I know, but for the right thing. Like, this is a FOMO moment <laughs> This for is me. a FOMO moment. No, this I for sure moment. agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, guess who's going to, I know what I'm doing after this um, podcast. I have like 15 minutes to spare. So I might be yeah. putting in my application at that time. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yes. And but me after. We can, we can do a little dance together after. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm here for it. Again, like, thank you for sharing the resources. Um, we're going to call it the Library Chronicles. <laughs> the Library Chronicles, girl, like a whole study. Y'all, if, you, if, if you're still on with us, I just, I've just declared it. I'm going to do a Library Chronicles. Moment. I love this. Yes. <laughs> I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm your target demographic here. <laughs> there, my, there you go. My, Starbucks my, my. ain't got shit on the uh, on the libraries and like all the resources that I find there. Yeah. For real. So um, and they have a lot of resources for entrepreneurs. Like they have, you know, like a lot of resources when it comes to grants and yes. like writing business plans and things like that. Like I mean, the library is lit, y'all. Like like they have events. They have yeah. a, so like this is what's happening at my library next Monday. I have a date at the library, and I already know my schedule because they are uh, they have this event for adults, and we're creating our own crystal bookmarks. Ooh! And I was like, okay, what time is that from? From two to three fifteen. Bet I'm gonna be there yeah. at eleven, so I can get all as much work done as I can before two. And then I will be creating my own <laughs> crystal bookmark. I like, love these that. Are the things I get excited about now, y'all. Mm -hmm. Like that would excite me it. too, for it's sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like if the Philadelphia Public Library is listening in on this, they do this like really cool like cooking series, especially yes. during the summer on their rooftop. Y'all, we need to do it a Platanos or Love event where I read the book. 
Y'all have me on your rooftop and then we cook some platanos, okay? If anyone is listening from the Philadelphia area, go bother the Philadelphia Public Library and tell them you want to see me there, okay? So I'm picking, um, I'm looking down because I'm already thinking on how I'm going to get to Philly in the summer. Um, it's like, just for everyone who's listening, me and Alyssa have never met in person. No. Um, it's probably like the fourth time I've ever seen you, but it doesn't even feel like it. And so I'm already trying to figure out if you can get happen, here, how it's going to happen. With me. Love it. Yeah. absolutely i will it's not uh, fancy i got an air mattress that has your name on it though yo, listen listen <laughs> the fomo for this event that we don't even like it's not even locked in but i know i'm gonna go to it again is real too many fomo moments with Alyssa, y'all <laughs> and i know like you're also like into art and yes philadelphia is actually the city in like with the most murals than any city uh, in the whole country so oh we can God. go on a mural arts tour they do have a great food scene but it's more affordable than new york city i will be your whole tour guide girl so the Are air the chronicles of philly oh my gosh yeah. and then we're gonna yeah and then we're gonna have like the main the main event that it's all gonna lead up to is the library Platanos with Love Cookout. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's yeah. it. It's been thrown out there. Cookout. We're manifesting it. We're going to figure out how it's going to happen. <laughs> Stay tuned, everyone. We'll figure yes. it out. Um, <laughs> Alyssa, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your knowledge. Thank you for letting us know how we can keep up with you. Um, again, I am so excited to see you this summer. The FOMO is like, you know how you have rage? I have FOMO. So I'm like, let's do it. We're going to make it happen. Let's do it. Let's um, do it. And we're manifesting that shit. We're putting it out there in the universe. We are meeting each other this summer. Um, for all of those who have joined, thank you so much for listening. I hope you were able to receive the gems of knowledge that were dropped on today's episode. Please don't forget to leave us a review. Cinco estrellitas, por favor. And join the online community Making Leader Moves on Facebook as well as Instagram. If you do have a question, please feel free to reach out to us at makingleadermoves at gmail.com. Again, gracias once again, and I will catch you on the next episodio. Abrazos, besos, y cariño familia. Ciao!